Hey, fellow shopkeepers and do-it-yourselfers out there in YouTube land. Today I want to do a quick review on this uh, J&I uh, Foreman's truck bed that I bought. Uh, it's been on there since the uh, week after 4th of July last year. And uh, I really like the bed. It's a good-looking bed. Uh, the front, they cut this corner off and kind of angled it and... They did a real nice job with the welds and hiding them and grinding them down and smoothing them out and and uh, a pretty good job. It's painted. It's not powder coated. Uh, the hinges. They did a poor job on these hinges on the on the front cabinet. They did not put any way to lubricate them. Uh, I had to call them, and they sent me a hinge, and I seen how it was made. Uh, these are are there's three pieces the top piece that little copper washer and the bottom piece and the bottom piece is is machined with the pin in it and uh, this one the the one that is welded to the body has the pin and the one that is welded to the door is the female the male the female. I hope I don't have to explain that to you. But these are opposite. Because the pin is down. And you know that the one that is welded to the door is the female. The one that is welded to the door is the female. So I drilled, um, I don't know what size it was, about not quite an eighth inch. Drilled a hole in there and tapped it and put grease zerks in. Because last winter, these doors got to where they wouldn't hardly open. Um, you can't lubricate and make oil go uphill without working that door back and forth 8,900 times. So I had to drill them out and put grease zerts in them. I asked them not to put these lights in here because I don't like them shining in the mirror when I'm trying to back up. Well, they said, well, the DOT, we got to put them in there. So I painted them over so you can't hardly see them. But they were so worried about putting those lights in when they put my uh, wires back here for my license plate light. They didn't even wire any lights in there. The dumb asses. There's holes there for the lights, but there's no lights in there. Well, we got to put them DOT lights up there. But no, no license plate light. I've gotten a ticket for that before. Not in this, but in a semi. Anyway, these front cabinets, I wanted, I didn't want boxes down here. I wanted a full cabinet. This cabinet, this toolbox did not come with it. I ordered it online from SeaTech Manufacturing. And fellas, they built a really nice box. Uh, it's, it locks. Uh, there's a little, it's a pretty heavy duty plastic that goes in right there. But when you pull back, on the handle it unlocks it so going down the road the drawers are not slinging back and forth and, um, but it's made and you lean it and set it in there and stand it up and then i secured it to the back and then down there to the floor um, but them stupid lights they put in up here they leak a little bit and it gets a little bit of water in here if it rains hard enough but anyway they use stainless steel hardware, but then chrome-plated uh, pot metal on the handles. They ain't worth a damn. They've already started to oxidize and look like crap. They did a piss-poor job cutting this out. And I asked them not to, not to cut out two holes because the def on this truck is under the hood, not back here by the diesel tank. Uh, this piece that they had welded in there uh, looked like it was... Uh, a last minute uh, uh, step and and they they did a poor job cutting it out it's not even it's not even a pretty cut but I cut it down and tack welded it here and so I could put my uh, uh, fuel filler on it because this piece right there was welded in about two and a half or three inches further back so that cap would be way back up in there and that's not, you know, that's terrible. I wish they hadn't even cut that. I could just cut one hole wherever I wanted it. I'd probably cut it up a little closer here. 
Uh, but I'm going to just take a, get a nice piece of polished stainless to put in there in that rail and uh, finish that off. Uh, these top boxes are pretty nice. They put these gas charge prop rods in there. It makes it kind of hard to open one-handed, but uh, they put grease zerks in these uh, hinges here, and that's very nice. You can grease them. I never had any trouble with these this winter. And the, the cabinet underneath, of course, they used them same shitty chrome-plated pot metal handles, but the hinge down there has got a grease zerk, and there's a grease zerk, and those boxes are about... 18 inches deep maybe 20 something like that eight uh, maybe 20 inches tall uh, and they put this uh, angle across here well did a real nice job cleaning the welds up and painting that uh, the boxes or the bed is painted it's not powder coated uh, but that keeps the the rain and material from uh uh, uh, not material, but elements, what I meant to say, from getting in that box. And it stays pretty dry in there. Uh, I put uh, my my uh, original four-way and seven-way uh, harness connector in there and put one up here in the, in the, in the back of the box. And uh, I also took out the hardware for my uh, spare tire uh, jack you put the handle goes in there back up in there it still is bolted to the frame uh, the original uh, jack is fastened to the frame it's not fastened to the bed the the half inch uh, steel that they put up there your gooseneck chains they made it in a triangle and it's a little bit too small you really can't get your your hooks in there they should have kind of bent that a bar back like a made it like a rocking triangle so you could get your your uh, your safety chain hooks in there back here on the back on your class one uh, receiver you can't get a hook in here uh, they should have uh, kind of ovaled that out a little bit so you can get a hook in it um, but this is a two and a half inch uh, two and a half inch, I believe it is, uh, receiver. And uh, they got some nice D rings welded in there. Um, I put the uh, the fifth wheel hitch in, bolted it with uh, four three eighths bolts, uh, grade eight bolts, and bolted a, a, a front bracket in so I can just pull the pins, pick the fifth wheel up, and move it back to these two and set it down to pin it and uh, but when it's not being used it's up there in the front and pinned down and it's secure not moving around and I've pulled all oh, a dozen uh, fifth wheels with this bed and it does a real nice job one of them was a big heavy tree uh, three axle and uh, I never had any any problem there's no sagging in the in the bed it holds up pretty good uh, the cabinets on this side the hinges are the same they did uh, they did do me a real good solid when they shipped it from Medill Oklahoma to the to the dealer in Springfield Missouri the scumbag from the shipping company threw the straps over the top of the the box and burned it here and burn it there and the same where the strap went over that side and up there at the front on the other side of the box uh, they heard about it and, and they paid me for that damage and it also kind of tweaked a little and and the lid was pulled back so and it was it chipped the paint in under here on this side of the cabinet is uh they put these little swivel j hooks there's two of them there I could have cut a mud flap and laid in behind it so these aren't banging on the sheet metal and there's a mud flap laying on the floor of this shelf so then my draw bars and all that aren't dragging and cutting and wearing into that uh, shelf and they put a nice little spring loaded deal just push in on these and and that 
releases each one these little swivel uh, toolboxes there they're, they're kind of handy uh, I didn't think I'd like it but they're, they're pretty handy uh, the uh, they did a nice job gluing the the seal to the door but I don't have any trouble with that uh, they 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 built a really a really nice bed the the cabinet uh, metal is uh, point uh, it's eleven hundredths of an inch thick I don't know what that is in gauge but just plate back here is like three sixteenths maybe even thicker than that it goes all the way across I cut this two inch hole to put this in there and man that was that was solid uh, but it's not a it's not a square looking bed you know you're you're angled off back here on this corner and you're angled off up here if they had just not put them stupid lights in there and wired up some license plate lights for me that'd been great but I'll put some in it one of these days I'll get to it um, I do need to do something with my exhaust turn uh, turn down it it's not really low enough and it sometimes when I stop I can really smell exhaust uh, diesel exhaust because it kind of circulates on this this beds pretty solid and the 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 cab vents back here it gets that uh, fume up in the cab sometimes but they they put this uh, receiver here for a, a plate that's welded on a square uh, post for a, a vise well that's great but they should have put a damn drain hole in that I need to get under there and drill a hole in there so that don't hold water and I think they should have put drain holes up in the front of the bed too two five sixteenths holes one in each corner would have been nice but uh, and they did not put this in it had a just a regular seven way I took it out and then made the hole bigger to receive my original GM seven way and four way and then I put one up here the seven way connector because I like it up there when I'm pulling this type of trailer rather than draping it down over uh, but anyway uh, I really liked the height of these boxes up here or I'm gonna call them cabinets I'm gonna get a small cutting torch set to put in that cabinet over there and I'd like to cut this out right here and and throw that light in the trash but put in a little door right here that's the same height as this so I can get into that area back in there and I can I can put some more tools in there uh, pry bars and and uh, maybe a small sledge and uh, make better use out of that out of that space it's lost because of this toolbox in there um, anyway I'll go over here and I show they sent me a hinge I'll show you the the hinge they sent me okay I dropped the uh, the copper washer that goes on there the little thrust washer but anyway that is a solid piece of steel and it's kind of teardrop shaped and that's where they would weld it to the like it was welded to the cabinet hang on there air compressors and the way they would weld the, the teardrop to the to the cabinet or the door whichever but that's one solid piece and the one that goes up I mean how are you going to get oil to go up and lubricate it and the, the tolerance in there is pretty tight I mean 
it has a little bit of rock to it, but not much. And that was obviously the, it's the female. And I drilled a hole in the top and tapped it out and put a grease irk in it. And I had to drill it at an angle because I don't know about your drill bit, Chuck, but mine is a lot bigger than that. So, so I had to drill at an angle. Otherwise, the chuck would be dragging against uh, the body of the, the truck. And uh, that wouldn't have been good. Um, you can see, get a straight edge here. Nothing's working out for me. Um, it, that's on there. See, uh, you can't you can't drill straight because you got to move the truck out of the way. Anyway, if able to drill them out before they put them on, put a grease zerk in there, or just put a zerk plug in, then at least you could take the plug out and drop oil down in there. Uh, but so if you get one of these or have one and, and you're looking to see how uh, how to lubricate them uh, and and it is the the piece that is welded to the door is the female and that's the one you want to drill because you can drill this one and you just you ain't gonna you ain't gonna gain that you'll get a hole but there's no way to grease it because this is not, you know, if, if that was uh, hollow in there, which wouldn't make a lot of sense, that'd be a lot more work to machine a hole in it all the way through. Um, but with a hole in there, you can put a grease arc in it and you can lubricate it. So the one that is welded to the door is the female. And, and they're staggered so that uh, if they were all welded the same way, you could open the door and pick the door up off of the hinges. Which I don't really understand. It's not a security thing because they'd have to compromise this, which, I mean, you can compromise that with, with a hammer and a chisel. And, and you're in it but if they were if they were all mounted the same way you could open the door and just pick that up right off the hinges but this one is welded to the door it's a female and the top one here is welded to the body it's the male the female is on the bottom in the middle it's welded to the door it's the female. That's the one that's got the grease arc in it. And this one, the female, is welded to the door. So the one that is welded to the door is the one that is the female. And that's the one you want to drill out and put a grease arc in. But anyway, fellas, J&I Manufacturing out of Medill, Oklahoma. They're, uh, They're uh, fully uh, competent to build a good bed, and they did. It's the nicest looking bed, I believe, on the market. CNM builds a good bed, but the front is the boxes are they're square. They don't have this this angle back here on the on the back right here. I like that angle. It just it's a nice looking box. And while it service truck, dag on it, uh, you know, I, if I wanted a box, I'd, you know, I'd have just built me a truck bed out of out of plywood. But uh, it's painted; it's not powder coated. They could use a little bit better hardware, I think. Uh, but other than that, J and I truck beds out of Medill, Oklahoma. J and I Manufacturing is is their business name. I don't know who the salesman is. Uh, I'd like to tell him that uh, 
he's a jackass but uh, I like their truck bed I think you'll like it too share like and subscribe fellas